Hi, welcome to Project GEO. I'm Adam Simmons, and I'm here with uh, the United States Geospatial Intelligence Foundation's uh, Daryl Murdoch. And uh, Daryl's going to introduce himself and talk a little bit about the GEO Symposium coming up and his role in it. Sure. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, my role here at USGIF is as the Vice President of Professional Development. And you might ask, what is professional development? Um, USGIF's primary mission is, is to support and encourage the tradecraft, uh, the GEOINT tradecraft. Uh, professional development encompasses training and education and all aspects of that. And um, we're also standing up a new professional GEOINT certification program. So all those pieces combined are my role here at the foundation. Okay. Uh, so, can you talk a little bit about the certification program and its, uh, how it complements what NGA, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency's uh, training program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, maybe a little bit of history would be helpful. Um, in fall of 2011, um, um, Under Secretary for Defense and Intelligence, uh, Mr. Mike Vickers, sent a memo to uh, uh, the director of NGA, Ms. Long. Um, asking for a plan for GEOINT certification from her. Uh, gave her a year to create that plan. And that plan was submitted back to Mr. Vickers uh, September of 2012, just about a year ago. And um, in the interim, NGA has gone on and executed a, a, an initial um, certification program. Um, it's a multi-level multi program um, designed to certify the NGA workforce. Uh, what we at U.S. Jafford are doing is creating a certification that complements that NGA certification, but it's also applicable to folks that NGA will not be certifying. So effectively think of NGA certifying themselves and U.S. GIF being in a position to certify everyone that NGA is not certifying. Okay. Uh, so can you talk a little bit more about how this, uh, how this applies to that, uh, that workforce, for example? Um, uh, does this uh, extend to colleges out there, people who are just getting involved with the geospatial community, the industry as a whole? Uh, does it just apply to people who work with the military and the U.S. government? Or does it extend to GIS professionals that are, uh, uh, that work more with civil agencies or, or, or you know, or maybe just, you know, for, for profit? So, uh, the answer is that all the above. Okay. Uh, I think an understanding that GEOINT as a discipline, as a profession, is a combination of, of geographic information systems and remote sensing and data management uh, all put together and uh, it's a very synthetic uh, discipline and requiring, um, there's a whole host of, of players in the GEOINT enterprise. So rather than simply having a, another stamp of approval saying I'm a, I'm a certified GIS person and there are several professional GIS certificates out there or certification programs. Um, this certification program combines all of the parts that are required for a practitioner of, of GEOINT. Um, so it's all those pieces parts. Um, in terms of the academic piece, uh, I'll talk to that a bit. USGIF has an active uh, certificate program that, that is a uh, uh, that complements existing programs that are out there in the academic community. So we have eight different schools right now that have a GEOINT certificate program that's part of their, their program of study. We plan on, on morphing the requirements for that over time to match an initial certificate, certification program, I'll cut that part, you did that. Um, we plan on morphing the certificate program so that it matches a, an initial certification capability. So when you come out of a USGF accredited certificate program, you'll be ready to take a certification exam. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, um, so I understand you're still laying the groundwork for this program. Yeah, it's very How new. do you imagine that uh, people will sign up for this? Do you imagine people will have to be a member of USGF for one thing, right? So. That's, um, you know, we're in the process of revising um, and considering specific revisions to our existing membership structure. Mm -hmm. um, no final decision has been made, but yes, um, you become a, an indi at least an individual member. Um, there will probably be some, um, some nod and some benefit for becoming a, uh, a corporate member. 
uh, whereas you'd have some certain amount of uh, certifications that may go along with becoming various levels of, of uh, a member. Um, so that's all being worked out now. It's, uh, it's all pretty new. Um, because we are a 501c3 educational not-for-profit, um, this is not a, a money-making endeavor, um, but we're going to have to be able to cover costs. So there will be some costs associated with, um, with taking a test. We have to administer it and be able to have all the process and procedure on the back end for those things. Okay. Um, so in terms of the, uh, you'll have a certification program laid out uh, that complements NGAs, just kind of trying to summarize this here. What kind of reaction are you getting from the community towards this? This is groundbreaking work here. Uh, you, you get a lot of good feedback, uh, a lot of compliments towards what you're doing here. Yeah, you know, it, it's, um, I think universally we hear from academia, from our government partners, from our corporate partners, um, and internationally. Um, tremendous support for uh, this type of certification. Um, I think there's a recognition in some quarters um, that it's a very unique discipline. Uh, I mentioned it's synthetic and it has multiple pieces to it. And uh, as people learn more about what we're trying to do, um, I, I, don't, I can't recall anybody that's been negative toward it at all. Um, it, the only pushback we typically get is that we said, well, that's already being done. And then we peel back the onion a little bit and then the folks that usually make that statement say, you know what, it probably isn't being done. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, great support uh, from all of our partners and from our members. And uh, people are eagerly looking forward to what it looks like and asking a lot of questions. Questions are great. Um, I wish we had more answers to a lot of the questions, and we will over time, but uh, right now, um, it is early. Um, we are laying what we call a framework right now. A uh, framework, we'll have a blueprint. Think of it as um, uh, maybe a, an inner office memo box with uh, you know lots of holes for different people with different names, and inside of each one of those uh, mail slots, there's going to be literally a blueprint. So for each function that has to get done, there'll be a blueprint that gets rolled up and stuffed in each one of those mailbox holes. That's what we're building right now. Um, so you mentioned international interest, and I want to touch on that. For sure. Example. Because, you know, overall talking about this, this really sounded like a uh, U.S.-based initiative. But uh, since, but this sounds like it could have an impact globally. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we could talk about it in a couple layers. One is, we can talk about the ASG, or the Allied System for Geospatial Intelligence, right? So the, our allied partners that are uh, you know, primarily English-speaking English um, around the globe that um, have a vested interest in what we, as a community, do on the intelligence side. So that's one piece of the international puzzle. Um, that we share data, we share data products regularly with these partners. Um, and then, more broadly, um, businesses and business intelligence and specifically location-based intelligence is, has moved so rapidly in the direction of really becoming a GEOEN enterprise that one could argue that GEOEN as a discipline is ubiquitous in all businesses around the globe right now. So I think that uh, in fairly short order, um, the perhaps initial but now by evolution narrow definition of how we talked about GEOEN in in terms of United States Code Title 10 and Title 50, that definition really has evolved and what has evolved from that is a heightened interest globally in GEOEN as a discipline. And overall, uh, standardization across right. the Right, and so what does that mean, right? So um, it's tough. I read an article about uh, the professionalization of cyber the other day. And uh, the author was saying, don't do it because it's very difficult to professionalize something that is so diverse and divergent in, in context and in application and tool sets, et cetera. Uh, you can make the argument, the same argument, I think, about GEOIN as a discipline to a certain level. But I think that there is a, there is a common core of understanding of, of tools and techniques and understanding of what it means to do things in a geospatial context. You know, everything has a, an X, Y, Z, and T to it at some point in time. Um, I think there's a universality of that that's different than cyber. So um, yeah, I, I look forward to 
helping define and refine what this thing looks like as we move forward with tremendous input, input from uh, so many partners. Well, on the note of standardization, a lot of feel, people feel that standardization of these, I guess you could say, uh, of industry, like GeoN, mm -hmm. in a way it's kind of looked like the Wild West. You go out there, you, you, um, they innovate in a lot of different ways, new technologies come out, but standardizing all of a sudden might restrict the innovation. Do you think that's the case? Or do you think we might see a new level of innovation building off of best practices of the past? I think the latter rather than the former. And I think that you can think of standardization maybe in a couple different parts. One part of standardization would be open standards, right? So data standards, data management standards, data collection standards. Um, I think we've gone a long way um, towards standardizing how we metadata tag, for example, imagery. It's a simple thing. It's a requirement. You know, 10, 15 years ago, while it was a desired thing, it wasn't necessarily standard. No. It was, and it was certainly not performed standardly if, in fact, it was even done. Now it's part of the collection process. You collect it and the metadata goes in with it as part of the data. It's just considered part of doing business. So that's an evolution of a standard, a set of standards becoming standard part of the tradecraft, right, for example. Um, so I think that between data and the application of standard workflows to some degree in different vertical disciplines, um, that's not a new concept. No. Right? That's, and that's not at all. But what cuts across all that is the ability to be able to make sense out of space and time. And I, I think that um, there will be new standards that will probably emerge from what we're doing. And there will be some very robust discussions about what a core competency is, right? So if I'm a, a person working for a, a uh, international investment banking firm, and I'm doing location-based intelligence work about what's going on in, I'll make it up, Singapore, right? So that may have, and I'm, I'm looking at social media feeds and I'm able to do a sentiment analysis out of, out of that. Well, that's not, any different than what may be going on at the open source center when they're doing something similar looking at World Bank or trade or currency fluctuations. Same work. One's being done in the commercial sector, one's being done in the government sector. Right? So is that a standard workflow? I don't know. Yeah. But they do the same things. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that makes total sense. And I, I think, um, okay, yeah, I, I think it's a, you have a great initiative going on here. Um, but I, I should ask, in terms of setting this up, uh, once again, still early in its stages, mm -hmm. when do you hope to kick it off the ground and finally get people actually started uh, certifying? Uh, that's, a, that's always the $24,000 question, right? Well, when, when, when? Uh, next you know? year? Or? Um, yeah, in 2014, we will kick off uh, an initial pilot. Okay. Uh, from that pilot, we'll get feedback and uh, um, shortly thereafter, roll out the first version of what this looks like. Um, always looking for early adopters, uh, looking for folks that are interested in participating in betas and pilots, um, folks that want to be interviewed um, to be able to get their, their voice in the mix. Love to be able to hear from folks. We'll be having a series of discussion groups, focus groups, roundtable discussions, etc. You asked me a question at the outset, I didn't answer it. Let me answer it now. During the GON Symposium in Tampa coming up um, in the, the second full week in October, um, 14th through 16th with the GON Ford on Sunday the 13th, on Monday and Tuesday, the 14th and 15th of October uh, in the afternoon, we have uh, a series of roundtable discussions that will be focused specifically on certification. We have members from NGA that will be having a, a, a panel discussion there. Um, folks from academia, uh, a number of our, our accredited programs, and uh, folks from industry. They'll all be represented, and we hope to be able to get a really good sense of you know, what their concerns and interests are based on what we hear from that, and the output of what that, that goes on at that, that round table. Okay, excellent. Um, so, I, once again, this certification program for pretty much everybody in the GIS mm -hmm. industry, uh, benefits everybody, not just in the U.S., but globally, too. So it would be really exciting to see what comes out of not just GeoLand, but over the next year. And uh, so for folks who are not involved with the USGF right now, uh, do you have contact information you want to advertise in terms of 
uh, they have questions, comments, how do you, how do they get a hold of you if they want to participate and get involved with USGF to become a part of this program or ask questions? Sure, they just go to the USGIF website and there's information on certification there. Uh, it's usgif.org, simple to get to. Um, my name's Daryl, you can always get a hold of me. Yeah, it's, uh, my email is daryl.murdoch at usgif.org. So if uh, you want to send me a note directly, please do. Um, or call here at the office. And, you know, it's, it, we're not hard to get a hold of. Um, and we welcome folks from all walks of life. And um, it, the geospatial world in general, um, I don't want to call this just a GIS function because, as I mentioned, you know, GUN is a discipline. It's a combination of remote sensing and GIS and data management. And you can add a bunch of things in that, including uh, um, structural design and, and cartography and a bunch of other parts that are, some people might argue, subspecialties. But it's those three big buckets that are all kind of put together. And there's a, there's a, synth, there's a synthetic layer on top of that that make GUN truly special in my mind. It's not uh, one of those very important disciplines. It's a combination of a lot of them. And that's why it makes it different. OK. No, great. And I appreciate your time here with me interviewing. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll actually we'll post this on the Project Geo page, as well as the Project Geo uh, YouTube channel. Um, one last question I have for you sure. uh, is for students who are not in college yet, mm -hmm. uh, do you plan to make an impact on the high school or lower level? You know, Boy oh, yeah. Scouts even, you know? Folks are getting wow. involved on a GIS level, on the, or geospatial level, on a very basic sense. I'm glad you mentioned scouts because both my, I got two boys and they're both active scouts. Um, I'm assistant scout master. I mean, I know this ties into <laughs> young professionals group, which we interviewed yep. with Carrie uh, the other day. Yeah, absolutely. And um, but tying the knots here in terms of not just certifying but training our young folks up to so be a part of this. So right? it's a it's an excellent question, and um, let me answer it this way. You know, we are in active conversations with. Um, you know, graduate level programs, undergraduate programs, two-year colleges, and 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 high schools. Um, there are a number of vocational training activities that are going on that are globally uh, that are scratch that part. There are a number of training and education programs, such as I get, that focus specifically on two-year colleges and universities. We've made a commitment internally to continue to foster, uh, at least in the Northern Virginia area, um, activities that would support uh, geospatial work in the local high schools. Um, I think it's really important for us to develop over time a, an end-to-end -end pipeline. So we go from high school to junior college to four-year college to university and every, one, every step along the way is supported by some function that we do inside the foundation. Um, it's going to take a lot of work and I mentioned partners, lots and lots of partners along the way. Um, and while we can't build that entire pipeline, we can certainly support most of the facets of that pipeline or own chunks of it where it's appropriate. Okay. Yeah, excellent answer. And like I said, not to go off on a tangent as we're concluding, nah. but on the other hand, uh, I support professional and career development, and uh, I think that's something as I got out of active duty last year, uh, yeah. I feel like there's something lacking. You get a college degree in geospatial, uh, in geospatial industry, but in terms of uh, building your skill sets up, working towards certifications, uh, it's a struggle, but it's very important um, as it encourages others to move forward in a career in, in, in the geospatial industry. Yeah, it's, so. it's tough. It, you know, it's it's there's a um, um, the one last chunk of information for your audience is that USGF has sponsored a, uh, a a current survey about GON certification. It's a very and and we encourage everyone to take this little survey. It's it's literally ten questions. If it takes you more than five minutes to complete it, I would be very surprised. Uh, most people complete it in about three minutes. Uh, you just go to the usgif.org uh, homepage and it's there. Um, but we're getting some initial feedback from what goes on, what's gone on, and, and what the results of that survey um, show us in terms of what you just got done asking. And I will hold that, the results, until we have the final, 
and maybe we can come back and revisit that and talk about that at a future date. Awesome. Well, thanks, Daryl. And uh, once again, join us. Come watch the video and uh, come see other interviews that we have on our channel. And uh, can't wait to see you all at that uh, GeoNet Symposium 2013 this year, too. So, all right, thank you.